Hello students. In this problem, we're asked to find the volume of the solid ro obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves about the specified axis. For this particular problem, we are looking at the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals 1, and we're rotating that region about the line y equals 5. Now, what makes this problem particularly difficult is that we are rotating not about an x-axis or y-axis, but about a separate line. So let's get a picture to see exactly what's going on. I'm going to draw my x-axis and y-axis, and I'm going to graph the curve y equals x squared, which I know is a simple parabola centered at 0, 0. And it has the points negative 1, 1, 1, 1, and negative 2, 4, and 2, 4. This is my y equals x squared, right? Just a quick sketch. I also want to graph the line y equals 1, which I know is a horizontal line that passes through 1 on the y-axis. And I want to rotate this shape this region right here, which I'm going to color in blue, I want to rotate this region about the line y equals 5. Now that's a horizontal line, and I'm going to rotate this shape around this axis really fast. And can you envision what happens? As I rotate this shape around that axis, where does it go? It goes onto the other side, right? And if I swing it around really fast... Can you see kind of what's happening? What, what's happening? It gives us, have you guys ever seen like napkin rings? Um, I don't know, uh, uh, like, like something that you put and you stuff a napkin inside? Possibly. But what it is, 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 is it's kind of like this big cylinder. Well, it's, it's almost like a funky donut that's got straight sides in the middle, but the super big hole. I think a napkin ring is more kind of like my speed, but can you guys visualize this shape here? So as we go around, we get this shape, and it's got a huge hole in the middle. Thus far, we've been talking about finding the vol volume of these solids of revolution by making cross-sections. And if we were to make a cross-section on this, on this shape, then notice when we, when we cut it, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, what, what is coming out? Notice what comes out, because we have this big hole, is a washer. And so the method that we're going to be using to find the volume for this solid right now is a washer method, right? So when we make our cross-section perpendicular to the axis of rotation, the cross-section becomes a washer, this little thickened thickened washer here, and we're going to use the washer method, which tells us to get the volume for this particular little washer is to take the surface area of that washer, which is pi big R squared minus pi little r squared, and then we're going to multiply it times our thickness, which is a change in x, or what we're going to use as dx along the x-axis as we're cutting along the x-axis. So what exactly is this big R and what exactly is this little r? Well, remember, big R is going to be the distance from our axis of rotation to the outer part of that washer, the big washer. So we're going to find the area of that big outer circle first. And then we're going to find the area of the little inner circle. So that's the distance from the axis to the inside circle. And we're going to subtract those areas. And that's going to give us the area of the surface of this washer. And when we thicken it up with dx, that gives us this washer. So we're going to integrate, add those all up, and get a volume for this particular shape. The tricky part is finding that r value and that big R value and that little r value. So let's go back to our actual graph and let's see if we can't envision that big R value. That big R value is the distance from the axis of rotation to the outer part of our shape. 
And so if I look right here and I consider that shape going around that axis, do you see that that distance right there that I've just highlighted in green, maybe I'll have to change that green so we can see it show up a little better. But there we go. So that big R value right there is the distance from the axis of rotation to the outside of the shape that's being rotated. That's my big R distance. And my little r distance, which I'm coloring in red, is the distance from the axis of rotation to the inside of that region that's getting rotated. So I have my big r value identified, I have my little r value, and now we just have to put functions to those particular variables. So here we go. All right. To get the volume of this solid of rotation, what we're going to do is we're going to add up or sum up washers. So I'm going to use the integral symbol to denote that I'm summing up a bunch of washers. And each washer has an individual volume, pi big R squared minus pi little r squared times the thickness, dx. So this gives us the volume for a single washer. We're going to add those all up, so we're going to integrate or sum them up across the region. So what are my bounds going to be? Well, my bounds have to match my variable of integration. I'm cutting perpendicular to the x-axis. Therefore, my bounds have to run along the x-axis. So our region in blue, notice our region in blue, is bounded on two sides by two x values. On the left side, it's bounded by negative 1. And on the right side, it's bounded by 1. And let me just blow that up to just highlight that. So this, this curve here is bounded from negative 1 to positive 1. So I'm going to integrate all the way from negative 1 to positive 1. Now, if you're tricky, you might say, well, Tina, look, there's a lot of symmetry involved. And, and there is. Could I, couldn't I just do half the curve and double it? And, and you can. You could also go from 0 to 1 and double that curve if you wanted to. And that's also going to give us the same volume because of symmetry. All right, so I've got my integral set up. The next step, and which is the trickiest part, is finding that big R and little r. So what do we want to do? Let's see. So I need to identify my big radius, and I need to identify my little radius. Well, I'm just looking at the picture, and my little radius is a little easier to identify. So let's go over and let's do that guy first. The little radius, remember, is the distance from the axis of rotation to that inside function, the, the curve that's on the inside when I rotate around my axis of rotation. Notice that distance is always constant, isn't it? The distance from the axis of rotation down to the inside of that curve is always going to be a distance between the line y equals 5 and y equals 1. That's the inside curve. It, it always will go from y equals 5 to y equals 1. So that distance or that inner radius is always going to stay constant. It's going to be the distance between 5 and 1. So I could write it as 5 minus 1. And that means that my little radius is always going to be 4. So we can replace 4 in place of our little radius. What about big R? Big R is a little trickier. Big R, I say, is a little trickier because notice it's bounded by that other curve, the y equals x squared curve, and that's not constant. That's changing, right? That curve there is changing positions and is not holding a constant level. In fact, it's described by y equals x squared, meaning that if I was to look at the distance from the x-axis to that curve, that curve is defined by x squared. So for every x value, when I square it, 
that gives me the height of that curve. So that distance is x squared. But I don't want that distance. I want the opposite distance. Ah, oh, let me draw a picture to make it a little bigger. I should have done a little forethought on this and gotten one picture in one go, but that's okay. Here we go. So we're going to take our y equals x squared curve, right? And we're going to send this region from negative 1 to 1 between y equals 1 and y equals x squared, and we're sending it all the way up here, right? All the way around this line, y equals 5. And we're specifically looking for this distance right here, which is r. That's the distance from the axis of rotation down to the curve. But I have already identified that the distance between the x-axis and the curve is always recognized by x squared. Therefore, r is the other part needed to get to y equals 5. Do you see that? So if I go x squared units to get here, and then r units gets me from there all the way up to 5, I have the following relationship, right? That if I take x squared, that small distance between the x-axis and the curve, and I add to it my radius, which is the distance to get from the curve to the line y equals 5, I get 5. Or another way to look at it, right, is that r value is 5 units subtract off that little itty bit at the bottom to get from the x-axis to the curve x squared. So my r value, my big r value, is actually the expression 5 minus x squared. Very similar to how my inner radius was 5 minus 1, that distance, right? So when you think in terms of distances, the distance r is the distance between the curve 5 and x squared, which I can write as 5 minus x squared. All right, now that was a really lengthy explanation just to get us big r and little r, but now we're set up to go. I think I'm going to choose to use the second integral to find the volume, so the volume is twice the integral from 0 to 1 of pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. So I'm going to pull out a pi. I'm going to be left with big R squared minus little r squared. And I'm going to instead replace big R and little r with the expressions that we just calculated. So let's erase that and then let's take and put in place of big R, 5 minus x squared squared, that's my big R value, minus and then 5 minus 1, or 4 squared, that's my little r value, dx. And let's clean that up. That means my volume, and let me kind of put a little separator in here so we don't get too much work confused here. Our volume is 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1. And if I multiply out 5 minus x squared squared, I believe we should get x to the 4th minus 10x squared plus 25. And if I subtract off 4 squared, that means I'm subtracting off 16. So the integral that I want to do is actually the integral from 0 to 1, 2 pi, x to the 4th minus 10x squared plus 9. Now, we know how to integrate. I don't want to waste any more of your time because I think you know that's a simple polynomial integration. You can just move on from there. But this formula here, this setup here, is how we're going to set this problem up to get the volume of the curve. And after you go and integrate and plug in your value and your limits, you should get an answer of 176 over 15 pi cubic units for the volume of this shape. So that's when you integrate this all out, plug in your limits. Like I said, I don't want to take up any more space with this. I did just want to get that set up for you because I know it's a little tricky when you go around an axis that's not an x-axis or y-axis. Anyways, I hope this made sense. If you have any questions about any parts, don't hesitate to reach out and email me. Good luck.